Hey everyone, I'm Christine Blanchet, the host and producer of The Closing Act, a music entertainment program. On this month's episode, I was in conversation with some of the actors at this year's Whistler Film Festival. Check this out. I'm yes. excited to have with me a star to watch for, Daniel Dehoney, and he's here today to talk about his role in the film Drink Water, which is an award-winning comedy film. Welcome. Hi. Yeah, so Daniel, you actually done a lot of running in the film. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how did you prepare for the role? Um, yeah, well, the film is about um, a guy who joins a, uh, a, a marathon, basically. Um, and um, uh, I, I'm a pretty active person. I actually play tennis a lot. So um, I'm used to running, but not kind of long distances. So um, uh, I, didn't do, I didn't do any kind of full jogging preparation, really. Um, but uh, I did ask them to change my shoes a couple times because the shoes were kind of uncomfortable. Well, you know what? You made it look so easy. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you really did. Um, you know, and so the scenes of you running, it looks spectacular. Was there a favorite scene? Um, I mean, um, maybe my favorite running scene actually was um, we got to run up um, to the top of this big hill. The film is, we, we filmed it in Penticton and it's also set in Penticton. Um, so I got to run up this big hill in Penticton. I can't remember what it's called. Um, I'm not from there, but uh, they have a big, like a Hollywood sign that says Penticton. And we have this big shot that pulls out and says Penticton, this huge hill sign, and I'm running on top of it. So that, that was pretty cool. Yeah, so, so tell us about your role. You play Mike Drinkwater, and what attracted you to the role? Um, I liked... Um, that Stephen Campanelli was um, directing it. Um, I was a fan of his, and um, I thought it was a really funny script. And um, I knew that I would get to get to get to play play around with the script um, and kind of do my own thing with it, and and have as much fun as I as I could. Um, yeah, any, anything where I get to where I get to mess around uh, and and just play as an actor, uh, I, I I'm. I kind of grav gravitate towards those things. Yeah. So, I mean, tell us, how did you prepare for the role? Because um, I find, you know, you have such a great connection um, with the cast, the other cast members. And how did you prepare the script? Did you, did you add ad lib to it? Did you have that, um, you know, freedom to do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I ad libbed a lot, actually. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um um, and we, you know, we didn't have a lot of time to, to make the movie. We only made the movie in about 16 days. Um, you know, and I was there pretty much every day. So I kind of just had to not think too hard and, and just, um, and just go and just kind of let the arrow fly. So. Yes. Yeah, so you're wearing a Canadian shirt, a Montreal Canadian shirt, number 19. That's, That's right. Robinson. So yeah. how, how excited were you to wear Wear the shirt. <laughs> I was actually really excited. Yeah. Um, I mean, my dad is, uh, my dad was a huge um, Habs fan in the seventies. He lived in Montreal most of his life. He had season tickets in the, in the seventies when they had their dynasties and stuff. Uh, so the Montreal Canadians are kind of injected into my blood, even though uh, I am kind of at heart um, a Vancouver Canucks fan, just because yes. I was born in Vancouver. <laughs> So those are, those are my two teams, uh, and they're both uh, sucking right now. So they're they're not both not having a good season. <laughs> but it was really fun to to wear a Montreal um, Canadiens jersey in the movie. It's that's kind of a yeah. dream. Yes, and what do you want people to take away from the film? Um, I'd like people to um, to just take a little bit of joy away from the film and a little bit of hope. I think. Um, I think uh, definitely purposefully, I think Stephen wanted to, Stephen Campanelli, the director wanted to make the movie because um, he wanted people to, to laugh and come out of the theater feeling better than they did. Um, Cause it's, it's, you know, it's been a hard couple of years and lots of stuff has been going on um, that, that has been putting people down. So I think he wanted to make a movie that would bring people joy and a little bit of hope. Yes. Cause I understand it was filmed in 16 days and, during the pandemic, which 
how did you deal with that? Like, you know, it was pretty intense, I would think, um, in such a short time. Yeah, well, it was kind of nice, actually, to get out of the city during the pandemic. We, I mean, we filmed in, like I said, Penticton, um, and there weren't any cases in Penticton at the time. So even though we still had to wear masks everywhere we went and, and still followed all the COVID protocols, it was still kind of nice to know that um, we were we were in a smaller town where um, where COVID wasn't really uh, rampaging at all. Um, so it was it was it was kind of nice to get out of the city a little bit, even though we were still following the protocol. It was still we still got away from it for yeah. a little. You know, congratulations, your award winning actor Leo Ward, um, for example. Um, so how does it feel to be a star to watch? In your program, congratulations. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's it feels great. It's a it's a great honor. I, I love the Whistler. Film Fest. I think it's one of the best film festivals in Canada, and it's really unique to have a festival here in Whistler. Uh, it's just such a unique place on the on the mountain. It's snowing today. Uh, um, it's really uh, really excited to be here. I'm really grateful. Yeah. And is there anything else you'd like to add, Daniel? Um. Oh, I don't know. Um. If you can uh, see the movie Drink Water. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. It, it's going to be. Um. We we're told yesterday it's going to be playing. Uh, in Cineplex and Cineplex is across Canada on January 21st for all the frontline workers. Um, yeah. So that's, I'm, I'm really excited about that all, all across Canada and Cineplex is going to be playing. Hey, and have fun in Whistler. Enjoy the snow. Thanks. I will. <laughs> okay. Bye for now. Bye. I'm excited to have with me today, two cast members from the award-winning comedy film, Drink Water, which recently premiered at this year's Whistler Film Festival. Eric McCormick is an Emmy-winning actor who's also a star in the Canadian Walk of Fame as well as the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He also was honored with the Trailblazer Award with, at this year's festival. Also with me is a star to watch for, Lorenza Tronco. And they're both here today to talk about their roles and about the film. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> So I'm so how excited are you to be recognized at this year's festival, the 21st Whistler Film Festival? Well, it's not you're I mean, I'm receiving the old guy award yeah. and she's receiving the young person's <laughs> award. So we, we're really covering the whole the whole gamut of talent <laughs> here at the uh, the Whistler Film Festival. I think it's it's amazing because we didn't know each other before the film, and uh, she and uh, Daniel Doheny are um, another name I never say right. Is it Doheny? Uh, Doheny. 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 That's all it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doheny. I always want to say Doheny. Uh, Daniel Doheny and uh, Larisa are are the stars of the movie. They're the heart of the movie. Their uh, connection and their chemistry is off the charts. So. Um, and I just get to dance around and be be an idiot in the background. <laughs> yeah, you know, actually, I, I love the movie. It, it's um, a comedy with a coming of age, but it's also a lot of sports. You're a Canadian, and, and I love it. The hockey, and um, Daniel's wearing the hockey number, I think, 19, which is Larry Robinson, I believe. But it's just, it has such, um, you know, it's about running, and I see you on the bike in the first scene, Eric, and... What attracted you to the script? It was not the sports parts. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, just, that was not the first thing for me. Uh, I, I loved, uh, I thought it was really funny. Uh, the director is a, is a man of, of infinite enthusiasm and joy. And, and that came through on the phone when I spoke to him. Um, and uh, I, I love that there's a, there's a real father and son element to, to it. That's, I mean... Like I say, the heart of it is their slow burning uh, friendship. But for me at the time, my, my son was the age that, uh, that Daniel is in the movie when I did the movie and uh, and going through his frustrations of 12th grade and COVID and everything else. So there was something about a father and son living together and driving each other crazy and having to get to the other side that was uh, that spoke to me. Yeah. So <laughs> um I think it was, it's un interesting because when I first read the script, I I immediately went, oh, I know who she is. And that doesn't happen quite often. You know, I read a couple of scripts. I'm like, yeah, I could do, I could do the job. Like I could do it. But for Wallace, I went, I told my agent, I was like, I want her and I know who she is. And um, I, I think I just really, 
I, I knew her dryness and sarcasm was masking um, a lot of pain underneath. And for some reason, I just, I, I just found that so human, especially for her age, you know, she, she's still in high school. She's a senior and this there, she's a junior, I guess. And this happens to her and she's masking it with sarcasm and dryness. And I was just like, I know what that is. And, and I feel like it could bring something to her. So yeah, definitely, definitely the character. Yeah. Yes. And you know, you're on the bike. I mean, what did you prepare <laughs> the scenes you're so you look so fit I mean I mean it was the first thing right when (laughs) like after COVID hit so I was like I gotta really get in shape but I think I think my butt hurt for like the next like three weeks when we were filming that because I I think it was like a 10 year old bike so it wasn't like (laughs) it wasn't a sturdy (laughs) bike going down those hills um, of Penticton but um but it was a lot of fun and I, I think I had the easier part where I got to bike and Daniel had to run. So I definitely was sure. leisurely biking beside him while he's sweating it out. <laughs> yes. I mean, was that a favorite scene? Oh, like Your did favorite. you like? Honestly, we talked about this yesterday and it was such a small it. moment, but um, I rem- maybe it was because it was the first day we met, but when, when, when oh. Eric comes out um, as Hank in his underwear and he just says, oh, yeah hi Wendy and he then he just walks away and doesn't even get her name right and and he improv that and I just started bursting out laughing because it just reminds me of like my own dad who just doesn't get any of my friends names right (laughs) and they've been friends my friends for like five years and he still doesn't have their names right and it was just it was so funny that was probably one of my favorite moments yeah I love that moment because I I didn't tell Steve I was going to wear tidy whities and nothing else. I just wanted to surprise him. And I knew I was, I knew he wasn't going to go tight, uh, uh, literally go tight, but I was just going to be in the background of their shot. And I figured that if you and Daniel, you and Daniel, and then he cut to me, but instead he uses this long shot and you guys have at least five, six lines and you can see someone is standing in the background wearing only underwear. And then we see that it's me. And I get your name wrong, which I uh, was not in the script. I just thought it was so makes great. Because I think your name comes up two or three times in the script. And every time my character is like, who's Wallace? <laughs> it's like the girl, I told you, the girl next door. It says a lot about him, I yeah. think, from that, with that one line, for sure. Yeah. And I think it was just so funny because we have this, like, really serious conversations. The first time I'm talking about, you know, my mom and and him with having an absentee dad. And then it's just, and then that's just, like, breaks the ice. So, <laughs> Um, it was really great, yeah. And I love the, uh, one of the things that made me sign on is always got to be one scene in, in a show that you just can't wait to do. And it was the, the scene in the principal's office for me with, uh, yeah. and this is long speech, which, uh, you know, uh, is nothing really. I just, but I was so rusty. COVID had been around for, uh, you know, been almost a year and I just hadn't memorized anything. And so I had to, um, to go and what was it called lockdown? I had to be in, in quarantine in my house in Vancouver two weeks before going wow. to do it. And I just wandered around my house like a crazy person for two weeks, just saying that speech wow. over and over and over again. So when I finally got to the office, it just burst out of me like, yay, this is something I get to finally say this <laughs> Oh, words. wow. Yes, you know, like, was there a, like um, adding like to the, the script did you have any involvement in adding to the script or you just followed um... I didn't these these can him and and Daniel are comedic geniuses um and and Steve and also the writers Luke and Ted uh really encouraged everyone to improvise yeah. um mm-hmm. so a lot of their stuff was improvised and would be different every single take and, and fresh and made the whole crew and cast laugh yeah yeah, Steve was very encouraging of that. He just, he never wanted the same thing twice mm-hmm. and uh, happy to oblige. <laughs> we said, I want comedy gold, folks, comedy gold. And that was the <laughs> thing you'll take, so. Yes, I mean, was it filmed in 16 days during the pandemic mm-hmm. and it was in Penticton? So mm-hmm. tell us about that. Like, it must have been really, you know, so fast paced and so intense. Well, particularly the whole first week was um, the two houses side by side. So all the stuff with your grandparents, plus all the stuff with Daniel and I, which was a good four days worth of stuff. Um, we got all that out of the way. And then it became all the big exteriors like the hockey rink. And then all of that running stuff mm-hmm. they did in one day, which is the last 15 or 20 minutes of the movie. <laughs> uh, although I must say, watching it last night, I thought this is more than 5K. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is what 100K yeah. they're running here. But uh, but with the drone shots, I mean, it looks incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all. That's Steve and a good first AD is what it is. Mm-hmm. The Pan Am Okanagan 5K. I mean, it was such great running scenes. Like the lover boy, I was born to run. I, <laughs> not like you, Eric. <laughs> so, but yeah, so uh, it, that was fun, you know, uh, you know, filmed in so many places, which the hockey rink, as you said, the school and, uh, and then Luke, who's the writer, I mean, who had connection to Penticton, right? So it yeah, was- the, the, the producer, the producer is his dad. And, um, and they'd shot a, a version of that movie for $1.50 about 40 years ago when, when he was a kid. So it's a lot of History. A lot of family history in it. But the, I think the coolest thing to, f- to see it in front of a crowd, besides just that, that it's charming and funny, is the music in this thing is like half the budget. And it's mm-hmm. almost entirely, not entirely, but almost uh, Canadian mm-hmm. from a certain period, like when I was young. So, I mean, to see uh, like a song like, you know, Could Have Been a Lady by April Wine, and that's in the dodgeball scene. It's like, I never would have picked this for a dodgeball scene, mm. but it is genius. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah, I was saying last night that because because the music uh, question from the audience came up of, you know, how, how much money was in the budget for the for the music aspect, and I just I, I was just saying like the music's a, a separate character in this in this yeah. movie. It really is because it, it it they tell a story with the music. It actually they actually tell you how you're supposed to be feeling with the music and and you know all those running sequences with all those, you know, motivation. Music, uh, songs I'm like I want to start running with him like yeah. I'm ch- now I'm cheering for Mike as well and I think I think the, the music does a really good job with that mm-hmm. what do you want people to take away from the film oh. hmm. um, merchandise we want to sell a <laughs> lot of merch uh, a lot of merch a lot of merch I think honestly, joy, you know, Um, I think the common theme of this movie, a lot of people signed up because, you know, it was during COVID and everyone really needed a laugh. And I always think that laughter is the best kind of medicine. So we're going to do, it's actually resulted, a woman in Calgary was speaking to the director and just said said she was a frontline worker and that the movie had just taken away for two hours. It had taken away a year and a half of of exhaustion and and grief, and so he went to uh, he went to the producer and said, "What we got to do something with this?" And so we are going to on January thirty first, in connection with uh, Cineplex Odeon, um, this movie is going to play in every Cineplex theater across Canada. Uh, one on that evening of the thirty first for all frontline workers to come in free and have a great night. And we're gonna we're gonna shoot something to honor them. And so it's it, it it's exactly what Louisa said is just um it's it's joy it's it, it really makes you um yeah it's think. uplifting it's inspiring is there anything else you'd like to add hmm that is a good question I guess the next festival that it'll be at is at um uh the Victoria Film Festival um in BC oh. so so uh, I believe that is in uh, February. Oh. So um, that will be the next festival that people can see. I'll come it. to that. Great. Are you going to go? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Any chance to get to BC. <laughs> um, yeah, you just see this movie. It's it's uh, It has got a lot of heart. And uh, it is two hours well spent. Mm-hmm. And she's great. Yes, and congratulations. And what is next for you? <laughs> well, I, I I actually just finished um, filming a short film last weekend. It was um, uh, predominantly an all Filipino cast, a Filipino director, a Filipino DOP. So to me, that was really, really special to me. And I'm excited to see where that sort of goes for myself. That's exciting. Is it going to go to short film festival? I think so. Yeah, I think so. That's awesome. I, I got a couple of irons in the fire that we'll, we'll see what, what the year brings. Um, but I've got a, a reading coming up in January, a reading of a play that is hopefully Broadway bound. So uh, that's my, that's my next passion. I keep hitting him, him up in the DMs of like, please, please write, read my script. And for some reason he's not answering. So I, I don't know what's oh, going that's on there. You. Yeah. Well. I didn't want to bring it up here, but here we are. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you. And I hope you enjoy your stay in Whistler and thank you for your time. And again, congratulations. Thank, thank you. you so nice to talk to you.
I'm excited to have with me today, George Strombolopoulos, and he is award-winning media personality. He is a humanitarian, he's an advocate, and he's award-winning broadcaster. And he's here today to talk about his award, inaugural Founders Award, which he received last night at the Whistler's Film Festival, 21st Whistler Film Festival, and his current projects. Welcome, George. Thank you. It's really nice to be with you. And from the background, does it look like I'm doing a self-tape for an episode of Succession? Yes. It feels like. Yes. And you know what? I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Yeah, I've heard so many different versions that who's to say what's real? It's a living language. No, you did. It was great. <laughs> so I'm really excited for you because you have done so much. You're also a Goodwill Ambassador, Canada's first Goodwill Ambassador, to add to that. and. How do you, what drives you? I mean, you're, you're just so multi-talented. And last night you received this award. Can you tell us about it and what does it mean to you? You're very kind to say that. Thank you. Uh, to me, it's, uh, I just kind of, I just follow whatever feels right. I, I sort of trust my instincts in my life. For, uh, look, many times my instincts, instincts have certainly led me down the wrong path, but uh, I know that I have been very lucky, very privileged to be able to spend 30 years in a career of my choosing, a career that I wanted, something that I love. I get to spend a lot. Most of my life in this career has been in the company of people who have lived interesting lives, who then get to share their stories with, with us. And so I've just learned a lot by being around all these people. And you see themes and you see you see pathways, you see who's happy, who's not happy. And you realize that what this is about... and it's like that old quote that many people have said, but service never slumps. So if you if you feel like you're doing the right thing and you're doing the right thing and you're not making it just about yourself, you'll always be okay. And I, I in my in my career, I've just made sure that I've kept that top of mind because honestly, how lucky are we to be able to do this for a living? And I don't take a second of that for granted. Mm -hmm. But I'm not driven. Weird, weirdly enough, though, I'm not driven by anything. I'm not a particularly ambitious person. I'm also not even a particular, like I have lots of work ethic, but I think that's just, you know, cellular for me because I, I grew up in this really uh, immigrant family where everybody just went to work. But I, but I think that's the only reason I work this way. I'm not sure it's smart. I don't think this is the right way to work this much, but it's just something that I do and it makes me happy. And, and, uh, and, and I feel, I think this is the key. I feel vital. A life of vitality is really interesting. And, uh, and I try to lean into that a little bit, you know, um, but there's no great ambition or, or, or drive.